Elbow pain is not random. The location of where you have pain can serve as a diagnostic clue to the underlying problem. And by understanding the source of your symptoms, you can then take the appropriate steps to treating your pain. Hey everyone, Dr. Jeff Pang here. Let's start with lateral epicondylitis, or more commonly known as tennis elbow. Despite the name, most people who develop tennis elbow don't actually play tennis. This condition arises from repetitive stress and chronic overloading of the common extensor tendon, where it attaches to the outside of the elbow. Over time, this can lead to micro tears and damage, weakening the tendon and causing pain. Treatment typically focuses on strengthening the tendon through targeted stretches and exercises. Recent studies have also shown that platelet-rich plasma injections and shockwave therapy may help accelerate tendon healing and improve long-term outcomes. Another less common cause of pain on the outside of the forearm is radial tunnel syndrome. This condition happens when the posterior interosseous nerve, which is a branch of the radial nerve, gets pinched, usually a few centimeters below the lateral epicondyle. Unlike other nerve entrapments, radial tunnel syndrome typically doesn't cause numbness or tingling. Instead, it leads to pain with wrist movements and forearm rotation. If someone has been diagnosed with tennis elbow but continues to experience chronic and persistent elbow pain despite adequate treatment, they should be evaluated for the possibility of radial tunnel syndrome. Now let's shift our focus to the inside of the elbow. There are three main conditions that can cause pain in this area, starting with medial epicondylitis, more commonly known as golfer's elbow. Just like with tennis elbow, most people who develop golfer's elbow don't actually play golf. This condition occurs due to repetitive stress and chronic overuse of the common flexor tendon, where it attaches to the inside of the elbow. Over time, this leads to micro tears and damage, weakening the tendon and causing pain. The treatment approach is similar to that of tennis elbow. Most people improve tremendously with targeted stretches and exercises to rehabilitate the weakened tendon. The second condition that causes pain at the inside of the elbow is an ulnar collateral ligament sprain. This can occur from trauma like landing on your elbow and overstretching the ligament from the impact. It can also result from repetitive stress and overuse, which is common in overhead athletes, such as baseball pitchers and volleyball players. For most people, treatment typically involves rest to allow the ligament to heal, followed by physical therapy to strengthen and support the area. Recent studies suggest that PRP injections may aid in ligament healing, though surgery might be necessary for high-level overhead athletes. The third cause of medial elbow pain is cubital tunnel syndrome. This condition occurs when the ulnar nerve gets compressed as it passes along the inside of the elbow. It can cause numbness and tingling that radiate from the elbow down to the pinky and ring fingers, along with weakness in the hand. Cubital tunnel syndrome is often triggered by sleeping with the arm bent, but any repetitive motion involving elbow flexion, like playing sports, working, or even using a smartphone and cell phone for extended periods of time can bring on symptoms. Treatment typically focuses on modifying the activity causing the problem and using anti-inflammatory medications. For those who experience nighttime symptoms, an elbow extension splint can often provide pain relief. Now let's move to pain along the front of the elbow where the joint line is located. This is where arthritis-related pain can occur. Although elbow osteoarthritis is relatively rare compared to arthritis in the knees, hips, and spine, it can still develop due to trauma, injury, or in some cases, rheumatoid arthritis. Common symptoms include pain during full flexion or extension of the elbow, along with a loss of range of motion. Sometimes the elbow may click or catch. Diagnosis is typically made with x-rays and treatment usually involves activity modification, anti-inflammatory medications, and injections into the joint to help control symptoms. Just below the joint line is where the biceps tendon attaches to the radial tuberosity in the forearm. This is where distal biceps tendonitis can occur. This condition is a repetitive stress injury where chronic overloading of the tendon leads to weakness and pain. It typically happens with motions that involve rotating the forearm or lifting heavy objects. 
Treatment usually involves modifying activities and rehabbing the tendon through exercise and physical therapy. In rare cases, a sudden high load contraction of the biceps muscle can cause a distal biceps tendon rupture, which often requires surgical repair. Now let's move to the back of the elbow and talk about olecranon bursitis. This condition involves inflammation of the bursa, which is a fluid-filled sac located at the tip of the elbow. It can cause swelling, pain, and tenderness. Olecranon bursitis is most commonly caused by trauma or repetitive pressure, but it can also result from infection or rheumatologic conditions. Most cases can be treated with ice and anti-inflammatory medications. However, in some instances, if the swelling is significant, the bursa may need to be aspirated to speed up recovery. Another less common cause of pain in the back of the elbow is triceps tendonitis. The tricep muscle attaches to the olecranon and is essential for extending or straightening the elbow. Repetitive stress and overuse can lead to degeneration of the triceps tendon causing pain with movement. Mechanical stress on the tendon can also lead to the formation of bone spurs at the attachment point, known as enthesophytes. Treatment for triceps tendinopathy typically involves exercise and physical therapy to strengthen and support the affected area. Those are some of the most common causes of elbow pain, but there's another important factor to consider, myofascial trigger points. These are hyper-irritable spots within muscle fibers that can be extremely sensitive to touch. Compressing, stretching, or loading the affected muscle often reproduces pain and symptoms. Trigger points are typically caused by a combination of factors like trauma, poor posture, repetitive movements, or chronic tension. Trigger points often coexist with many of the elbow conditions I've just described. They can restrict range of motion, cause weakness, and contribute to pain. Here's a map of common trigger points that can lead to pain in or around the elbow. One reason exercise and rehab are so crucial for repetitive stress injuries is that they also address the muscles in the forearm and upper arm, which often have trigger points that contribute to elbow pain. Trigger point injections and dry needling can also provide significant pain relief and help resolve symptoms. Understanding the specific location of your elbow pain is the first step toward effective treatment and relief. If you're ready to start an elbow strengthening and rehab program, I have the perfect next step for you. Check out this video where I guide you through a simple yet highly effective elbow exercise routine that just takes five minutes. It's a great way to get your elbow feeling stronger and healthier. Thanks for watching.